From the typewriter in the 1960s to the famous Model M with the buckling springs in the 1980s, the rubber domes of the 2000s, and the multitudes of mechanical keyboards that have been gaining massive popularity in the 21st century, the spacebar has been the same in the every iteration in the past few decades. So how can it be changed without losing its functionality? Typically, people find that they only use a single thumb when typing, with a possible change when moving to a different activity, such as gaming, especially with the space tied to the jump button on almost all games, fighting games being the exception. Yes, there are people that use the keyboard as a fight stick. And no, I don't mean whacking people with a keyboard. So to improve on the spacebar, you should still be able to press it with either thumb while adding functionality. Enter the split spacebar. Whether it's split up into two or three, you'll be able to reach it with either thumb. So if you shift from using the right thumb when typing and the left thumb when gaming, you still have access to the spacebar. This allows you to have both a regularly mounted spacebar and a backward mounted spacebar at the same time, allowing you to be on both sides of that controversial topic. If you only use one thumb when typing, this allows you to change the secondary spacebar into a secondary function. Most most keyboard enthusiasts use the secondary spacebar as a backspace button instead. This is because it stops you from leaving the right hand resting position when touch typing, therefore increasing typing speed. In gaming, this can be bound to a key that requires you to shift your hand position when reaching for a key. You can have the best of both and simply map your jump to the backspace button if you find that you only use your right thumb when typing. I use the secondary spacebar to shift the keys allowing access for the F row in games for emotes. But if you would think that having to memorize all the functions is an absolute chore, it is. You'll be glad to know, even I just use it for playback functions. I would suggest simply creating macros for key combinations that are normally inaccessible without looking at the keyboard. If you're an editor, I found that adding a copy of the JKL keys to a second layer and shifting the keys to the left side of the keyboard allows me to handle playback without leaving the mouse, reducing movement. What about the three section split spacebar? Well, it's simply more of the same with an extra button so you can add a tertiary layer. I actually use my pointer finger to press the spacebar, so having three is a requirement for me if I want to have extra functionality. But if you're a streamer, you can use the tertiary button to activate layers that are specific to OBS hotkeys, enabling transitions, scene changes, mute programs, or whatever hotkeys you may have. On via controlled boards, you can actually set the button to only change the function key when held down. This can be helpful if you don't want any accidental presses to occur. The split spacebar gives a lot more versatility to a keyboard while taking no extra space. The only caveat I found having a split spacebar is that they are notoriously hard to find. The keyboard I have now is the Mark 65, which has support for a full size or three section split spacebar. If you want to know more on the Mark 65, check out this video here, like the video, subscribe for more hybrid and work gaming gear reviews, and have a nice one.